uh, I wanted to say that um, figuring out what organizations want is a trick. I mean, it's some technique, it's, it's a task, it's a, it's a tool, it's a skill set. Um, but I, I, I don't want you to think that organizations are being cagey intentionally. I think a lot of times um, folks want to have prospects come in and they want to fill these job orders, but they're not exactly sure what they are needing. And so they, they write these job ads as descriptive as they feel like they can, but sometimes it's they want everything um, and that's a trick. And sometimes they are um, a little bit more um, broadly stated than, than specific. And so that could be a trick as well. So I, I wanted to hear about your experiences kind of looking for jobs and, and tell me what that looks like. You know, I, I'm of the age where like I've actually used a newspaper, um, like the Sunday classified pages and they would like circle jobs and it's like, oh, that sounds interesting or that sounds cool. But obviously the internet has done huge things to, to transform a lot of these processes, but but tell me a little bit about the way that you would typically kind of hunt through job postings or job ads. And and again, if you want to drop that into the chat, that's fair. But if you'd rather uh, just kind of unmute yourself and and share out, that would be great too. Yeah. So um, I think the internet definitely has been my major source of job hunting, um, and. I think I mentioned uh, Tuesday that I don't um, have a lot of experience applying for super professional positions. A lot of my jobs are part-time, sure. food service gigs, things like that. And they all post their jobs on Indeed. And usually it's just, you know, send your resume in and answer a couple informational questions. And then they call you and you go in for an interview. Right. That's a few questions. They're not too tough on you. Most of the time they're just, you know, trying, like you said, just trying to fill a slot, get you in, get someone covering that shift of time. Right, right. Every job I've had, I've found out through someone I know. Okay, okay. So that, that's, that's pretty great, right? So, so when you're hearing about jobs from other people, that that's that's neat because they know something about you and something about this opportunity and they say this this might work so cool megan shannon thanks for sh sharing that i know that uh india and amanda both have mentioned in the chat that um you know using company websites linkedin especially handshake and indeed those are those are super popular um kind of places but but tell me what that looks like when when you like, you might put in a search term, and so maybe you're looking to to be um, a financial analyst, and so you search for some combination of terms into the internet, and just all these things come back. How do you then evaluate and get a better sense about what that looks like from the organizational perspective? Because a financial analyst in a consultant house, a consultancy versus a government agency versus a school system. I mean, I think financial analysts, I think there's a lot of variability between those two or three areas. Personally, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, personally, I go in and I look at all the different job descriptions because I know that they can, the same job kind of could, the uh, responsibilities and whatnot can vary between organizations. So I look at what like the requirements are and what the expectations are so I can kind of gauge whether I'm actually um, ready for that job or if maybe I need to work on something to get prepared for it. Yeah, that's great, Amanda. I, I, think, you know, I think you pretty much just finished the talk. So um, we can just talk about whatever else you want to talk through. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I, that's right. I mean, it, it requires um, some reflection. It requires um, a real good sense about who I am and what I possess and maybe some things that I'd like to possess, but I don't currently have. And so trying to figure out how do I present myself as the most competitive candidate out there, right? So super, um, super prepared and, and qualified for the role. So um, since Amanda gave like all the answers, um, just showing off again, um, I, I wanna run through a couple of slides that, that, that might kind of give you some sense about how I think this could be done or can be done. 
Um, and, and one of my newer friends, Caleb West is in the, is in the call. And Caleb, uh, I, I had the opportunity to meet him through a search committee. So, so I was asked to serve on the search committee for a job at UTC and he applied for it. And, and Caleb was like a surgeon going in there and figuring out exactly what the needs of the job uh, kind of are and what he represented. And maybe even some of the small things he didn't quite yet possess about how to, how to kind of cover that and, and, and claim that and build out. So, so again, you know, I think between Amanda and Caleb, we're, we're um, you know, we're in good shape with all of that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and run through a few slides and see where we come up with, but, but again, thank you so much for being with us and you've seen this slide a few times. Um, but really, I mean, I think that there's a lot of commonalities here. So the structure for a lot of job postings, it really does tend to be fairly consistent in the sense that, um, that sorry, that it's going to go through the same types of processes, but it's important to think through the way that we, we, we approach them. And so again, after you review a write-up, and, and I think you've been hearing this throughout, is one, know yourself. The second step is always to, to begin to target or to align your skills, experiences, uh, your value sets, your interest with, with the world of work. And so that by doing that, it's going to enable you to write more persuasive professional documents. It's going to have you identify more and more relevant jobs, and it's going to help you um, in your selection so you can go through and have the right types uh, of interviews. So as we get into what this looks like, again, I've already made mention of this once, and I'm trying to manipulate my screens and I'm doing a terrible job. So I'm just gonna roll with this. So again, I've already mentioned this once, uh, job titles vary uh, across the board. So I use financial analysts. I could say um, a counselor could look different um, in, in a mental health setting, in a school setting or, or in a, um, uh, in, in a for-profit kind of business setting. I mean, I, again, a lot of these titles are are a little bit misleading. Uh, you might have been seeing some, especially in kind of the startup space, um, you, you might see some stranger um, uh, job titles like um, uh, some type of technology evangelist. Ooh, that, that sounds really strange to me. But, but again, they're trying to suggest that there are folks out there um, that are attracted to um, a, a job title and, and might be attracted to some creativity reflected there. So again, I think the job title can give off some clues. It can begin to suggest if it's a leveled uh, type of um, position. So for instance, customer service um, level one, two, and three, et cetera. I think that all of those aspects uh, can give some clues off. Um, again, the, the next section on a lot of job descriptions is the qualifications, and that could be called a requirement or experience section. But again, I don't know if you're like me. I mean, I suspect some of you are and some of you aren't. But like for me, if, if I've got, say, six of the 10 qualifications or requirements, I'm probably going to apply for that job um, because it's not that's just the way my personality is built. I feel pretty comfortable with that level of, of, of chance. But, but for instance, my wife, my wife is probably a little bit more comfortable like 10 out of 10. She, she needs to know that this position is perfectly situated for her success. She can walk in there with supreme confidence. And so I'm not saying that I'm right and, and she's wrong or that she's right and I'm wrong. I mean, experience would suggest that she's probably more right than I am. Um, but but it, but again, this comes down to personality. So know yourself. So you don't have to have every single aspect in spades um, on your resume and, and in your interview skill set. But I think it's important for you to to be applying to appropriate jobs, right? So for instance, if I had if there were ten qualifications and I had eight of them, I would have a very I, I would have a lot of confidence that I'd probably be invited in for an interview. There might be an opportunity for me. To, to really compete for that job. Whereas if the position I have six of the 10, uh, there's a good chance that they might find someone with seven or more of those skills that they appreciate differently. Um, so I might not get called. And so, so my, my expectations would be uh, different 
there. So again, I think understanding qualifications, I think that can really, really help. Um, another good way to, to, to decipher or decode um, these job advertisements is to really think through the responsibilities. I mean, oftentimes, um, I, again, going back to my premise, an organization, an HR office, they don't want to intentionally mislead you. They're trying to describe the work to the very best of their ability. Um, and some of it's, it's well done, some of it's not. Uh, sometimes job descriptions are um, just hopelessly outdated. So like 10, 15 years old uh, in some cases, and it doesn't really reflect the work. But again, I think looking through the job advertisement on the front end, and thinking through what, what I enjoy doing this type of work. So for me, I, I love a lot of variability. I, I love the idea where I can, I can put my hands in this project or, or I can have this report that I'm working towards or if there is um, a resource development, kind of like a, a money management component. And if there's a, a person development or, or an educational component, um, you know, I like having a lot of freedom to kind of choose my own path on that. So if I was applying for a job that, you know, it's reading very, you know, routinized and you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again, I, I might, I might be qualified for that job, but I don't know if I'd be happy in that job. So it's important to kind of read through the responsibilities and, and ask yourself, would I enjoy this work? Would this be something that, that would make sense for me at this next stage? And I'm not saying that work has to be, um, has to meet all of those like fun need meeting things, right? So work is work, um, but this is who we are to some degree, some aspect of your person, of your identity. So if you can get it aligned in, in, in a way that you would be feel great about your contribution, I think that that's, that's something that you should probably factor in pretty heavily. Um, and again, one of the other common elements is, is this idea about, um, what the company is all about or what the organization stands for. So there's usually like an about us section. And this is a great place to start researching about the company, about understanding its values, its direction, its culture. Uh, and, and again, realize that um, while you're trying to sell yourself to an organization, an organization oftentimes is trying to sell itself to you. Um, so I understand that, that that this would be a great way for you to qualify an organization or a role within an organization as representing a good fit for you. So um, doing the research on, on the front end is going to help you again develop great application materials. It's going to empower your interviews and it's going to help you make a better decision about joining that, that organization. And then the last two levels that we'll talk through here uh, is the experience level. Again, um, some folks will, will post different levels of work. So the customer service um, representative one, two, and three. And so this is the very clear path. And so if you've, if you've functioned as a, as a shift leader or as a supervisor of other people and, the, and you, know, you wouldn't probably like to go back to a level one kind of early, early entry position. So thinking through what that could look like Benefits and pay, I think those are always um, factors that need to be considered. Obviously, you can have a job that fits you, fits you like a hand in a glove, but if it doesn't meet some of your other needs as far as supporting yourself, um, that could be really, really um, disheartening uh, and that can, that can be unfortunate. Uh, and sometimes on a job description, you'll see things that say something like salary is commensurate with experience or there's a competitive salary. I don't know how they're measuring competitiveness, but, but I hope that they are. Um, so there is a, a session within Mind the Gap. Uh, and so it's uh, Janelle Hawkins. She'll be talking a little bit about negotiating salaries and benefits, and that's going to be tomorrow. So, so there, there's an opportunity there for you to get a, a better sense about your, your salary expectations and, and what those might be. And again, realize that, um, if you've got a if you've got a realistic sense of your of your contribution of your value in the market relative to others, that's going to be good information for you to possess. However, uh, just because you have this self assessment, an organization might not share your same uh, estimation. Uh, so so realize that there's a lot of, of wiggle room there. So therefore, it's important for you to know your market position 
and be empowered and ready to potentially compete for and then negotiate um, for those salaries and benefits that, that you believe uh, would be warranted. Okay, so that's a lot of the what's on a job description. You've likely seen most of those fields before. I'm gonna speak briefly about when to read uh, and maybe even how you would read uh, these job postings and announcements. And, and again, I, I have a lot of words on these, but uh, again, I think it's important, like, like when I'm 18, 19 years old and I've got the Sunday newspaper with a classified section and I'm, with my highlighter and my pen, I'm circling jobs. Like that's a very initial scan. And, and again, as an 18, 19 year old, I'm looking for someone who has a job, who's willing to pay me a salary or, or, or an hourly rate that I would find agreeable. So again, I was not very discerning uh, at, at 18. Now I'm much more discerning uh, because I've got a better sense about how the world works. And then further than that, I have, I have folks that are depending on me. Uh, so I've got a family that I need to um, provide for in a sense. So, so again, th there is an initial review where you're gathering basic information, you're identifying uh, it's kind of like that, um, that basket trick on a desk about, you know, put things in, in descending order. So first priority, second priority, and then later. Um, and so figuring out which jobs are, are right. And, and I've even taken this approach into a, to a job fair where um, I knew that there were three companies at, at, a, at a, say it was like a 50 or 60 company career fair. There's three that I really want to interview with. I, I had already started engaging in, in some, some networking and some conversations with their recruiters. I knew the jobs that they were there to hire for. Um, I, I had a new suit kind of put together for this outfit. Like I was ready to go. I went in like a sniper and that, that sounds super violent and dramatic, but I went in with the goal of three companies. I wanted to talk with all of them, but I didn't go right up to uh, A, B and C. I went to like, company K, like mid, mid level. I think they're, they're hiring for like a park ranger. I wasn't going for the park ranger job, but I wanted to get like the words going. I wanted to get the energy up. I wanted to get the, 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 the mojo flowing. Right. Um, and so I went up to a company and, and I, and, and I, I might, this might sound disingenuous, but I wanted to warm up uh, on an organization. And, and I, I don't think that's an awful thing to admit to. I mean, I, I'm doing it with, with, without much apology. But, but I think that um, getting a good sense about what's happening around you and, and getting started so you're ready to go uh, with the company that matters the most. So another, another time, so again, I think a quick, quick review to put you know, the top order and then maybe some other positions. And then uh, I think just like anything, figuring out what you don't want is, is almost as important as figuring out what you do want. Um, and then as, as the, the other areas in which you wanna go back and review the job posting or the job announcement is before you're writing a cover letter, again, you wanna make this as targeted as possible. Before you apply, I think go back through, make sure you're following all the directions, make sure that uh, you're tweaking your material so that way um, the, the relevant skills that you possess are, are being highlighted. And then, and then as you've applied and as they've considered uh, your materials and they've invited you in for interview, I think read the description again. Just make sure that you've got a really good understanding about what the job is and it'll help you to, uh, to really emphasize those points when you're talking. So, so we're getting close to the end here and I, I appreciate your patience. This has been a lot more um, one way than, than, than dynamic. Um, but, but I think that there's some really some technique here that, um, that, that maybe you might not be familiar with. I, this wasn't plain to me um, uh, until much longer, not too long ago. But, but I started teaching this technique to students a couple of three years ago, and it's been really helpful to them. And so um, I, I know it's easy to, to, to run a job search across Indeed and through the internet and just keep it all digital. Um, but, and, and you, can, you can manipulate documents in a, in a certain way doing this, but, but if, it, if it would help you, and, and I mentioned this a little bit um, in, in the application challenge in a second, but if it would help you just to print out a job description to, to really have some of this done. 
and, and these are, and, and you can come up with your own system. This is what I found has worked for me and for other students. It's just to highlight the skills that you possess. Like, you know, if they're looking for someone with professional office experience, one or two, five years, great. Um, if they're looking for someone with coding experience in what languages exactly. Uh, if they're looking for someone who uh, can, can interact with a range of, of children and adolescents. Okay, fantastic. So, so again, if, if, if whatever they're looking for that you've got, I would highlight that and that would become home base, right? So I'm gonna be scoring runs when I come back and touch on the, the, the experience that I possess. Um, that they're looking for. Uh, the thing that they're valuing is this thing that I can offer. I think that's important. But again, I, I mentioned a, a few minutes ago that sometimes knowing the thing that you don't want or don't have, that can be also important. Amanda mentioned this also. So underlining the skills that you that that are mentioned within the job ad, but you don't yet possess them, that, that could be your roadmap. So again, if your goal is to work at, at this organization at this level, and you look and you've got some of the qualifications or some of the, 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 the requirements, but not all of them, I think understand those areas that you can build. And so maybe you can take a course through LinkedIn Learning, or you could take a course through Udemy, or you could take a course through UTC, and you could develop some experience um, in, in a technical area that's going to help to further advance your candidacy. Um, you can join uh, a professional association uh, a lot of times there are uh, discounted student rates for that, but they'll help you to develop uh, some more uh, in industry connections and it's going to help you further um, diversify your skill mix. And again, that would be a great way. So underlining the things that you need to acquire, right? I think that's important. And then I think the next would be is to circle all the action verbs and action verbs are um, you, know, you, can go, you can go on any internet uh, search provider and you can just type in action verbs resumes and you'll get list after list after list. We, we've got two or three on our website. But again, go back through um, on the job posting and circle the action verbs. That's, those are the verbs that they'd love to hear back from you. So again, if, if this has been an, a recently updated job description, and they're talking about modeling or stewarding and you know that kind of thing. So if they've got authorship of the job ad and you're gonna give back their same words, you're, you're gonna gain some, some head nod. Like that, that's gonna really stand out uh, to them because you use the same words, you kind of see the, you're, you're signaling that you see the world uh, through similar eyes. So again, connecting the dots for employers around what you possess and what they need um, that's, that's a lot of the work about moving through and aligning your documents. Okay, so last slide. Here, here's the application challenge. Do this work, right? So find a job posting that you're interested in um, and then highlight it, diagram it, however you want to do it. And then develop an aligned cover letter and resume. And if you want to share that with me via email, I'd be happy to look it over and, and give you some feedback on it. Uh, I can't promise a couple of hours turn around, but, um, but you know, probably six to eight hours, I can get that back to you. Um, but I think that, again, doing something like this where you're going to find something that is directly related or maybe it's sec a secondary type position and then practicing by developing these aligned documents, that can be really, really powerful. And it could be a great way for you to, to flex your muscle and to, and to, and to develop uh, the confidence that you could do this, right? So that, that old expression about giving a man a fish or giving a woman a fish, they'll eat for the day, but teaching them how to fish, they'll eat for the rest of their lives. You know, that, that's really what we're about is not here to say, um, hey, once you come to the office, we've got this enormous binder filled with jobs that you could just pick from that that's not what this is i mean I, i've actually been in that career center that was like 1989 um we're not that way we want to help you um to develop your skills and give you plenty of opportunity to practice and then yes get connected with folks um but it, but as you explore discover connect and achieve 
um, you know, that, that's really where, where our delight is. So um, I've talked a lot. Um, I'd love to hear feedback or, or questions, uh, very specific things that you might like to share. I talked all the words out of the session. <laughs> uh, I actually have a few things I can throw in here. Oh, I uh, love it, Caleb. A, a few key takeaways and maybe a little feedback on my recent uh, job hunting. Uh, so like uh, Dr. Liddell had mentioned, I recently received a position here at UTC. Um, and so it had been quite a while uh, since I had gone through like the professional interviewing uh, process. So like he said, uh, I mean, I kind of needed a time to, to practice really. Uh, so whether that was doing it with like friends or my fiance, uh, just getting that time to actually practice and get the words out um, that I was expecting them to that be asking the questions for really helped me out and get the, the stuttering and the uhs and ahs out to, to really feel confident answering those questions I was expecting. Um, a question I did have though, um, something that I kind of struggled with in the beginning, um, kind of took a, a little bit of research to figure out, um, but what are ways to figure out like what your market position is um, and figure out what you should be asking for, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate to be asking for in like these negotiations. Sure. Um, what's, a, what's a good way to find that stuff out, especially if it's a job that's not, you know, found throughout a bunch of different uh, organizations. No, I, I really like that question, Caleb, and, and it requires a lot of um, um, a good bit of legwork on on the candidate's behalf, really. So yeah. in, in some settings, there are like especially government type roles, there are some very um, tightly bounded pay bands or salary ranges that they are authorized and a lot of organ. I mean, most most every organization there might be 5% of organizations that are, are effectively a, a total meritocracy that, you know, it, it, it's kind of like whatever it takes. Um, but, but most, the, the, the overwhelming majority of positions will have a, a budgeted range. And so um, HR or um, the company leadership is going to define um, a budget that, uh, that they feel comfortable paying in. And a lot of organizations are, are comfortable paying with well within that range. They're not trying to lowball everybody, but, but they do have some limitation about um, where they can go maybe towards the top end of their, of their, uh, of their range. So I would encourage you all to, um, to figure out where, where your market position is. And, and you could do that by a lot of informational interviewing. Um, again, some sources, especially publicly held organizations, will have some of that data much more available than privately held organizations. But you know, companies like uh, Glassdoor, um, mm -hmm. sometimes Dice, a few other uh, kind of uh, web-based resources um, will will publish salary bands. And and again, a lot of that is. Uh, employee referenced and, and so there might be some um, some irregularities but but I think that the the, the true trick is to uh, to not um, demand a number um, but rather talk more freely about um, getting the employer to to be super excited about you as a candidate and then have them approach you first with an offer. Because once you build the momentum, so that way you've got an offer from an employer of interest, uh, you, you, you have the most leverage at that point. Um, if you're doing your initial reach out and you're saying, well, these, these, this is the, the financial package I'm looking for, um, friend, you, you've not created any demand for your services or skills and so, uh, you've really got to climb the hill before you get to the very top and plant a flag. Um, so, you know, I, and I, I've, I've helped some, some friends of mine in, uh, in engineering backgrounds, et cetera. Uh, and, and they've said, well, tell me what you want to make. And so there's no way I'm going to give you a number because if it's, if it's lower than, than what you were thinking, I'm going to devalue myself and leave money on the table. If it's higher, I might disqualify myself. So, so I think it's, it's important to think through 
what um, what you what you your needs are, and then do some work on the front end to to see if um, uh, if this if this opportunity or this organization is going to be able to meet those needs. Did that help at all, Caleb? Absolutely. Great, great Good. feedback. Thank you. Good. Well, I apologize. I talk too much. Uh, my friend Ashton's on the call and she's ready to do her next um, uh, session about considering grad school. I'm pretty sure that's her topic. And so I'm excited to, to hear her talk on that. But thank you so much. If I could be a help to anybody, please don't hesitate and reach out. Uh, I'd love to help. So thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, and I hope that you continue to enjoy Mind the Gap.